board of members. So here we go. So hello, FBI. Yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> what what was your original question, Mike? I'm gonna recap that real quick and then we're gonna go through all the examples of it in the law. Okay, so my original question was I had thought that I know that the in the in Asgard it states that the gods have temples and armbands. And I was under the impression that they swore their oaths to Yggdrasil. And my question was pertaining to that and also the fact that does that mean that the representation of Yggdrasil is like more than uh, we lend it to be like not just that that connects nine realms, but maybe something more profound like a, a symbol of divinity. So this is a different question than the one I answered. I know a little bit, but that's fine. That's fine. So, so the impression was that the oaths were sworn to Yggdrasil by the gods, right? Yeah, now if that's not the case, then I, I could have been, I must have been mistaken, but I thought that that's what I heard or remembered reading a while back. So Yggdrasil is the binding force of the universe of life. It is the, the literal, the, the, the manifestation of the energy that holds everything together. The ebb and flow of spring, winter, and fall, the constant regrowth and regeneration, from the roots to the leaves, the constant gnawing on at the roots by the dragon, the constant feasting of the leaves by the four hearts, uh, the emanation of, of a river, of the mother of all rivers from the, from the dew that falls from the antlers of one of the, of the hearts that, that feast in the tree. That is, a, that's your real sign that, and I'm, I digress, but I haven't forgot your question, but that's the real sign that water is the, is the conduit of spiritual energy and the source of life. That's kind of where that whole idea came about Lagoos, that interconnectedness of all things, because water is where we, 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 we bless a child, we, we drink from the well, and it, it, and it travels across religions and faiths and history as a very important special feature. It is the source of all life and the conduit of spiritual energy. So when we're talking about gods, and I can't necessarily speak to the gods or what they might deal with or the interactions of the divine, but I would suggest, I would submit to you that it is perhaps the manifestation of those things, most powerful things from the universe that would be the examples of how we could more align ourselves with how the universe operates. There would need to be no uh, oathing or binding by a ring of a God to the universe itself as the God is the expression of life from the universe on a divine level in the same respect as Alan Watts suggests that we are also an expression of life and energy. We are all of these spiritual beings having a very human experience negotiating the path of the serpent to return to that from which we were created. And there's a, there's a real interesting flow of information there and water binds it all together. So I don't necessarily know that if it's a ring and I think we, I think we might damage our ability to, to comprehend this great flow of energy and spiritual, spiritual affection, I think would be the appropriate term if we, if we limit it to the human experience of the necessity of a ring. Yeah, that's what I think. I don't know where that came from, but that's what I think. Anything else? Anyone got any questions? No, I, I just know, wanted I to know. add that. Oh, go ahead, Melissa. Go ahead, Jess. I was just going to add. Um, that it's interesting that our ancestors knew about the importance of water. And then today, science is actually proven, you know, with like freezing the ice crystals and looking at them and everything that yeah. uh, energy does, in fact, affect the water. Yeah. You know, that's, there's an interaction there that I, that I think that should be, that should be explored in that, you know, every, all energy flows in a wave, right? I don't, I don't care what kind of energy it is, be it your heartbeat 
or light or the light of the energy you can't see or heat, music, sound, all of it travels in a wave. <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the terms for emir is shrieker, a sound wave. And, and, to, and to freeze that moment in time when the wave hits that, that water droplet and freezes it and changes it, um, I think that's there's something there, there's something that could really be explored there in depth because it's the same way that a microwave oven cooks food is that it, it heats up the water in the in the dish that you're cooking. So if you put something dry in there, um, you're going to be pissed. Like if you put some noodles in there with no water, it ain't going to do anything. You're going to get nothing out of it. <clears throat> so when we look at that, we begin to understand that the expression of ourselves also creates a wave that shapes the world around us if we're walking around talking negatively being angry hateful giving shitty stares at people um that, in, that we're creating a world around us that would very much be against us and if we're walking around with a positive mindset of appreciation uh, with with regards to the nature that we live in i mean i think that's why it's so interesting to, to, that we lose ourselves and find ourselves in nature and that we're, we're all of a sudden, we no longer have to navigate the path of the serpent in nature because we can begin to relax and we feel their flow and then our flow. And then there's no resistance to our existence. And I think that's what much of society creates for us when we're just walking down the fucking street, there's this resistance to our very existence. And, I, you know, you feel in the gym, there was a, just now there was a, there was a beautiful couple in the gym and, uh, he was big and buff, but she was shit ass hot. I mean, she was like, damn. And, but, you know, you could feel the negative energy coming off of him. Like, yeah, she wore all that tight spandex stuff, but don't look over there like a, you know, like a, like a protective dyke, I guess, a woman in comfortable shoes. I don't know. Just don't look over there. But you could feel his energies doing that. And it, and it immediately pissed me off because I'm like, dude, what makes you think I give a shit, you know? Um, when you're in nature, you don't have to deal with other people's energies. I think we can all at some level perceive them. You can all feel when somebody doesn't like us. Some people, some people are dumber than a sack of cat meat. I mean, they're like, a, they're like a retarded kid watching a magic trick. They can't quite figure out that I'm not looking at you and talking to you because I don't want to deal with you. Please go away. They just, they don't get it. But <clears throat> when we're dealing with all of this waves and energy and water, um, there, Jesse, you may be right. There, there very well could be a science behind that that be, that 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 would blow our mind if we understood how our ancestors perceived it or possibly even used it. I mean, I, I've heard all kinds of conjecture about the movement of large stones uh, using sound, and I've seen how they can do it in the laboratory. Sound waves, these these invisible forces that that direct so much of our lives. The idea that our emotions and our thoughts generate those same kind of waves, it might have kind of a foo foo kind of feel to it. But if you want to prove it to yourself that it does exist, to walk in the forest and you feel you won't have to use it, and that's where people say, "Well, I found myself in the forest." No, bitch, you fucking was you never been lost. You just need to quit reacting to every dumbass around you, and which is admittedly a very difficult thing to do in this day and age. I feel really called out right now. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly a problem that I'm dealing with, not focusing on the minutia and the dumb shit going on around me and giving people free rent in my head and focusing on what I need to do for me. Okay, so let me ask you this, Christy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real with you, okay? What would you look like as a person if you did not have that kind of righteous indignation and anger to fuel how you move through your day? That's a scary question for me. I'd have less gray hairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that, so that's, so, so I had this real powerful example in my father. 
Um, I don't know, he's been gone several years now. But I remember as a child growing up, he would come home from work and he would be so agitated about those motherfuckers at work. And I would watch him go into a tirade and, and just feed off of the anger and bitch about it. Had red in the face for a half hour, angry about something he couldn't do, any, he wouldn't do anything about. And I, I, I wanted to consider him a coward, but I know that he wasn't. And he would use that fuel because he would be tired at the end of the day. You know, he'd be tired at the end of the day. He still, I mean, it was just him and me, you know, and he was still things to do. And he would get angry. Then he would get, he, he would feed his energy and he would get up and he was using it as fuel. He didn't have any kind of example as to how it would be to relax and just get up and handle the necessities of life. And it always, it, and, it, and I was always aware of it at some level. I chose to use a lot of drugs to kind of cover up that kind of stuff. And then when I, when I let go of the, of the chemical substance crutch, um, where did I get my energy from? Well, I fell right back on what I was taught. I fell right back on the things that my father taught me as a child by his example. I found out that I could watch the news for 20 minutes and I would be angry and I could get up and handle all the other things I needed to handle. I had no idea that um, if I would pay attention to things that I could stop negotiating with my mind, and get up and do it's like hitting that snooze alarm. We make a decision, we have a little negotiating process in our own mind. Our, our own mind, well, think about that. So we're negotiating with ourselves about hitting that snooze. And when we stop negotiating with ourselves and begin to take, make our thoughts actionable items, just get up. Put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, it's, uh, it's for me, it was always a, a source of energy that, that I found that I could use. I found, caught myself in the shower the other day. It was Friday morning been a long week going to college going to school taking care of scarlet all the other things that go with it and i start I, I caught myself talking to myself in the shower mad about some dickhead at work that dared said the word bullshit to me because he thought he could get away with it and i wanted to punch him in the fucking liver and i was still mad about it the next day I was using it as an energy because I was wore out. I was using that righteous indignation as energy to keep me moving forward. What would I look like if I let all that go? Who would Brian Wilton be if he couldn't sound off and get everybody agitated about some kind of bullshit going on in the world? Would I be as important? I don't know. What if I could love myself enough to not negotiate with my own thoughts. What if I, what if I could figure out how to care for myself the way I care for other people when they give me the, afford me the opportunity to do it? Well, I find that it's a little bit better life. Now, my father, at the end of his life, so he had diabetes, he had juvenile diabetes. <clears throat> his frustration, his anger, all the people taking up the free rent in his head. The last five years of his life, he had one to two heart surgeries every year. It settled in his heart. All of that frustration and anger, it affects the body because the, the body doesn't know that what the mind is thinking isn't really happening. It's going to flood the body with chemicals. All the, all the things necessary for fight or flight are going to begin to work in the body as soon as the mind starts thinking. Now, this is our mind, and if we can't think what we need to think to take care of our bodies, ooh, what's that start to look like? Health issues begin to manifest. For my father, it settled in his heart. He'd have to have this one. He'd have to have this balloon down, or he'd have to have a bypass, or he'd have to have a little angio or a stent put in. He was using it, and now it's, now it's a no big deal. It's like routine. He'd be in there for a day, he'd be out the next day, take off for a day or two, be right back at work, no big deal. <laughs> so it was no longer an inconvenience for him. My grandfather, on the other hand, he had a triple bypass in 1982. 
And they, they, I mean, he had a scar that went the length of his body. I mean, it was brutal. They took three pieces of artery out of his leg and put it in his heart. Grandpa, after Grandma died, began to settle down. And I asked him one time, I said, Grandpa, don't these things aggravate you anymore? He said, Brian, I'm really too old to care. I got a beautiful farm to take care of. And he did. He had 160 acres of beautiful old growth pecan trees and a garden. When he died, before he died, they looked at his heart. And his heart had begun to regrow arteries and veins and stuff around the wounded parts of his heart because he began to find some semblance of peace. And he was a violent, dangerous man most of his life. And so, you know, we, it's all nice to know that we, we shouldn't act that way. We all kind of know it. We shouldn't be so angry about what's going on in the world, but there's always a real threat. Shouldn't I be angry about a real threat? Um, we got to figure out how to differentiate how we balance these things out in our life. We have to, uh, Yes, I need to be, that needs to be paid attention to. What can I do about it? Not a fucking thing. Okay, how much time do I need to spend wasting my time on that? Okay, this person over here is dumber than a sack of hammers. Yet they're in charge of me. How do I deal with that? I do the best I can with what's in front of me. We've got to figure out the tools necessary to do what we need to do and be the best we can at it in every step, in every step without using righteous indignation to fuel much of our activity. It's very, very hard to do. It's such a balancing trip. I personally, I go to therapy every two weeks. I go and sit down and talk with a therapist about whatever's going on. Admittedly, usually they're just bullshit conversations between two, between a lay person and a professional. But sometimes I will touch upon something that's deeper than I realized it would be. And I have to work through that. <clears throat> um, I think it's an essential part of being a leader, of being a, a Gothi or a Githya, is knowing who and what we are. Um, it's very difficult to help people free themselves from the, from the mental constructs that their parents, society, their friends, their work have put them in if they're, if they're working, if they're, if they're using jet fuel instead of unleaded gas, it's very difficult to make that change, just like coming off of drugs. I mean, it really, if, if for lack of a better term, it's, it's the same kind of process as, as sobering up, uh, coming off of methamphetamine. And I get some shit done on that. Don't you kid yourself. Usually in about a two foot area, there's a big mess, but I shoved it through all of it, I promise you. <clears throat> but living in this world, it's acceptable to be angry. It's acceptable for a man like me to walk around mad as fuck. I am, when I walk through the plant, when I walk down the street, when I deal with people, even, I mean, I'm 5'10", 220 pounds with a mohawk and a ponytail and gray hair. I admittedly don't look like your average dude. Um, having that positive outlook and a smile, hey, how you doing? Uh, people respond to that to build a team, which is what we're talking about doing here in the AFA of building a team. We have to be that example of what it means to step away from those ideas that, that foster righteous indignation in our minds in lieu of a spiritual experience. The whole, so much of what we've been taught is important of, we're gonna lose this if we don't stand up and fight. Who are you gonna fight? Who, have we identified the enemy? What's well, the Jew? Okay. Which one? All of them? That little 10 year old kid? Which one? Oh, it's the Negro. Oh, which one? Is it that one that drives the bus every day and makes sure your daughter gets to school? Hmm. Huh. It's the Native Americans, which one? Is that one that's drunk? Who are we supposed to be, we supposed to just put all of them in there? Well, the white man did, oh, which white man? Well, me, I didn't own any slaves. 
Which white man in particular should you be mad at? Well, the old ones. I'm old. I ain't never done it. I ain't never whipped your ass, nor sold you drugs, nor robbed you. Seems to me it was that neighbor of yours looks just like you. Hmm. See, we get we get confused. This is the path of the serpent that King Gilfie has to negotiate when he enters the hall. And then when he does enter the hall, it still continues on. There's a jug man juggling seven and laces. There's some over here playing games. There's some over here drinking. There's some over here just fighting with weapons. Well, if you stand there long enough to watch that, how far along down the path are we going to get? How far along are we supposed to? How am I supposed to lead anyone if I'm being distracted by all the busyness of this world? This is why Baldur's journey is so important. He steps away from the busyness of this world through a symbolic spiritual death and the goddess hell begins to share with him all of the combined secrets of knowledge and understanding of all the ancestors before him. Odin got just a taste of it, standing at the entry to the death. He got the runes, he heard the songs of his ancestors and he became what was necessary to lead his people. We gotta do the same thing. I like how my kids, my kids, I love them to death. But anyway, that's uh, for myself, that's in a nutshell how I negotiate much of this. Um, I, I, I can't, I don't, it's not that I'm not aware of all of the things that are going on in this world. You know what my immediate scope of responsibility is? Scarlet, come here. Come here, say hi to Melissa. Say hi, Melissa. Hi. This is my immediate scope of responsibility. And making sure she's hey there to be something wonderful. So the constructs that I'm gonna to try to shape in her mind are gonna be those of self-importance, empowerment. Don't need all those, those are wonderful. We found some marshmallows that have chocolate on the inside. They're amazing. So that's that's how I have to do it. It's the only way I can do it because I've, I've been an angry man most of my life. And I've been strung out and drunk and hateful and abusive and mean and I had to create an image of what it means to be a daddy. My, minus ever having one that meant anything. Right, I had a daddy, but he was also just like me. And so when we, when we start talking about all of these emotional things that we have to divest ourselves of to become leaders, the first tenet of military leadership is to know yourself and seek self-improvement. And if you look at any of the leadership training out there today, you can go through any LinkedIn course you want to, you can look at whatever book you want to read. <clears throat> In a nutshell, the first thing they will tell you to do is to know yourself and seek self-improvement. All the way back to ancient times, the unexamined life is not worth living. Know thyself over the, uh, the Oracle of Delphi. Know thyself. The Oracle is going to tell you all kinds of shit. But if you don't know yourself, you're not going to understand what she's telling you. And it's the same way with the Lord. If I'm wrapped up in the righteous indignation of, of whatever's going on in the world, and I feel like being angry, I got plenty of example in that lore that I can be a manly man doing manly things, and I can carry an ax and get a tattoo and just be meaner than shit and go out on the streets and whoop wholesale ass and feel good about it. <laughs> there's a place for that. Every young man needs to do that. Every, every young man needs to be capable of that. Every woman needs to see that her man can do that at the front door, if necessary, in her home. But there also comes a time, and maybe it's because I'm a little bit older now, that at this point, okay, I've got children and grandchildren. Um, I've got to help shape the construct in their minds. I do not by any stretch of the imagination, want to share the same kind of shit my father put in my head about the treatment of women, about society at large, 
about anything. So the spiritual experience that also true has the potential to provide for many people, if we do it properly as leaders, is one that allows us to deconstruct the old narratives that provide the false hope of righteous indignation at every level and allows us to build the confidence of an individual that they're so cunning that all things go according to our will. Now, does that proceed from our nature or from the divine beings we worship? Probably both. So you see how that all that kind of ties together and it's all in our Lord. I really like this conversation. Yeah, this is really important. Yeah, it is. And, it, and Melissa has seen me fail at, at Melissa has seen me fail at this in the most glorious of fashions. <laughs> and she's also nah. seen me, and she's also seen me succeed at it. But I think she's always seen me try. And that's that's the real key. Are you trying? And I got some dumb people at work that really aren't qualified to carry my water bucket. And I, I do my best to treat them or ignore them, as the case may be. I mean, there's some, there's some real bitches in there. I mean, you never see them smile. Just walking around, just, just damn, can't stand them. Cannot stand them. If I were to sit around and think about it, I could be mad about it. That bitch know who the fuck I am? Are you kidding me? Walking around like you think you fucking know something working in a fucking factory all your god. You know, oh, I got it. I feel the same way. I know exactly what you're talking about, Crystal. And my message <laughs> get in my head, make me mad enough to want to shit stand up. I don't have that luxury anymore. Because somewhere along the way, my dumb ass decided, hey, I'm going to be a leader of some kind. I'm going to write a book. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to talk shit on YouTube and Facebook. Hmm. Well, now it's all got to match up. <laughs> and sometimes it don't. That's just the reality of it, guys. That's just the reality of this human experience. Sometimes it don't match up, but damn, I'm going to try. And, sometimes, and it sucks sometimes. Sometimes it's painful as shit. I think sometimes, you know, there's the, there's a balance, you know, there's a reason why we're, we get um, full of anger, when we get upset with people or with organizations, but we're supposed to, like, I honestly feel like there are things that, you know, those are safety mechanisms for some of them. Sometimes it's just because it's easier to be angry at somebody than it is to focus on your own shit. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes those are safety mechanisms. But then it's just realizing like, you know, I have it. There are a couple of people right now in life that my God, if they fell off the fucking planet, I would have a party. Like seriously, no reservation about having that party. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but, but it's the realizing that instead of letting them make me angry all the time, I have to figure out what I can do about it. So sometimes you have to take control of a situation like, okay, this upsets me. This is not idea. What are, what are the things that I can do about it so that I can let it, live in the moments that it needs to and not take up all the space and the, the rest of the time, right? So, you know, sometimes all you can do is, you know, if somebody's a real dick, you know, all you can do is be vigilant and wait for them to fuck up, you know, what I mean? <laughs> and hope that, you know, as a loving human being, you get to experience watching that when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm a Scorpio, that's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> that's justice, that's justice. Yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah. That's not checkers. Yes, right. that's exactly right, Crystal. That's exactly right. Chess not checkers. <laughs> and and the, the ability to build that is is entirely based upon shattering those constructs that we were given as important. Oh, you need to hate niggers, Jews, cock swaps, and greasers. Okay. Now what? <laughs> okay. How about I love my people first? That might be a little bit more important for me to love my people. Yes. You know what I mean? How about I start with loving them and then I'll then I can establish the boundaries 
around you know all those people that I love. No, 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 no. That's that's not how that's going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you like know. we're free to love some more than others, right? Because huh? that's fine. Say what? I said we're free to love some of our people more than others. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sliding scale, really. It, it is a sliding scale. I mean, you know, you know what? That's a good point too. I need to. Remember. So, as 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 a organization, there's going to be some dickheads we don't like at all. Um. If you look at the Catholic Church or the Mormons, I mean, there's some catty motherfuckers in there, right? There, there's some, <laughs> there's some bitches talking about bless your heart kind of bullshit going on um, <laughs> with these catty people. But how the hell they managed to keep it together? Because there, there's a message being coming from a central source that that motivates them to go and do something better. And the cattiness that goes on between a couple of people, um, you can go on all it wants to. But, but what we're providing is of so much more importance that when they separate, they can go on their separate ways and still be successful. And I think we, I think we missed that. Some, we, somewhere along the way, we missed that part. Now, are we providing a powerful enough message of strength, uh, encouragement, of hope, of uh, em empowerment? Um, that supersedes so much of the nonsense. Like, you know, James, I mean, he's a, I got a call today from another person about him <laughs> being a fucking tool, you know? Uh, yeah, I got to call somebody out of the blue. It's not even in the AFA said, dude, that guy's a fucking tool. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm aware, I'm aware. And so how do we negotiate that obstacle? Well, my message is obviously going to be way up here, and his message is going to be some kind of dumb shit that we're going to see through. So I can walk on past that. That's our challenge. That's always going to be our challenge. Now, if I sit here and focus on how much of a tool he is, I mean, see, and for me, my problem is with, you know, Mark Perrier and Dave Martell. Those guys are fucking idiots. They just, their very presence makes me want to fucking shit standing up. <laughs> for a lot of reasons, a lot of political reasons that happened a long time ago. Uh, it's offensive to me that, that anyone even pays attention to them. And I'm sure the same thing is felt about James. So, all right, so I practiced on James Stepping above his dumb ass, that's easy enough. Uh, Dave Martel, mm, okay, how do I step above him? Well, I know how I'll do it, like this. And then hire a class of kindergartners to go teach a lesson, because I know he can't fucking do it. So I, I get it, believe me, I get it. <clears throat> but yeah, we gotta, we gotta provide some kind of message um, for whatever situation someone's going through in life. And it may not necessarily be, hey, uh, I got I got caught screwing around on the old lady. What, what do I do? Well, you fucking man up and deal with it. You're big enough to fucking pull it off. You better be man enough to fucking deal with it. Um, and everything that falls out from it. <clears throat> of course, that's kind of a double-edged sword because once they figure out they can deal with it, then they, you know, then they look like me. Okay, next question. Surely somebody has something. I'm sorry, it's making me think. So I, I'm like not. Oh yeah. It's a little hard to switch over to something else at that moment. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, you said you had a notebook. <laughs> oh man. Dude, I fucking lost my notebook. I was trying to like organize my, my office, but every time I try to organize my office, it looks like more of a fucking mess than I started with. I don't understand how that happens. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, reason. yeah. Just shuffling the mess. It was kind of a thing. <laughs> but I found my other planner that I lost, so it was good. <laughs> but I, but I, I mean, at least I hope everyone kind of sees that, you know, it's, it's not a once and done kind of thing. You don't achieve a certain level. I mean, 
I'm always working on those things. I'm, oh, I don't, I'm just, I have not reached an end state. I don't know what the final product of Brian's going to look like, but I do know some of the hallmarks to say, hey, I can probably do a little bit better. I need to let that go. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to try more, or I'm going to, or maybe I need to delve into helping someone else instead of focusing on that. Maybe I need to get out of myself. And so this person over here didn't have any food. I mean, the whole thing of AFA folk services was my deal. You know, I mean, I'm that I started that uh, for that very reason. And it's, un, it's inadvertently paid off this benefit of, look, we're helping the entire community. And that's people that get the chance to give that food away, even to people they're not supposed to like. I mean, it does good for them. There's a healthy kind of healing in that kind of generosity. The lives of the brave and generous are best. According to the have them all. Well, all of a sudden, we got a bunch of brave motherfuckers in here that are generous. And that that's something. That's the path of a prince. That's the path of a leader. I, I seriously hope that shuffling of paper wasn't all questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add something to what you were saying about that, where, you know, you have this extreme anger. I used to have, I guess still do in some ways, an extreme anger where if something triggers me, I can snap. And it's very, very extreme type of anger. But um, I'm starting to learn that it has a lot to do with if I'm thinking positively or thinking negatively. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking negatively, like these are my enemies. You have to do something. You have to fight. You know, I turn into a completely different type of person. But if I think more along the lines of positivity and channel that energy into an extreme positive type charisma and actually use my brain, because you get, you know, kind of stupid when you're angry, right? It's like you don't yeah. use the IQ as much. And so when you're positive, I notice it's like you're able to really use your intelligence like okay well, what do i do about it? not what do i stupidly do about it and end up in jail or something but what do i do about it that's going to really make the impact even a hundred years from now true very true that it, that is very true it's that it's that it's that continuous effort to maintain a thought process that's conduce or congruent with the manner in which we wish to present ourselves, the manner in which we wish to live. And and I, I would admit it, there's a there's a certain relief and comfort that comes with it. That that once you begin to seriously cement that type of thought process in our mind. And but you know, getting there is a scary thing. What I mean, I don't know, I don't what if I if I, if I don't have that to protect myself, um, I'm afraid people will hurt me. They'll take advantage of me. They'll They'll uh, make fun of me. They'll, uh, they'll, I won't be as important. Um, um, I won't be valued as much. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of things. And, and, and all of mass media today and much of social media <clears throat> is, is designed in such a way to pick that apart and push that button or this button or this button or that button or that to keep that going so you never have a chance to step away from it. I mean, you're bombarded with news 24 seven. We check our social media and it's, it's a continuous bombardment of these things that push our buttons about which we fucking have a right to be mad about this. Okay, I've got a bigger plan here. And I mean, all of this design to keep that agitated and all of that agitation keeps every special interest group separate. Even within the special interest group, there's separation and division because of this button. Well, you don't, you don't quite, you don't believe nearly as hard as I do. So I'm probably not cool enough to hang out with me. Go fuck yourself, you know. But that kind of shit goes on all the time, <clears throat> and you know, I mean, the instant I say David Lane's a putz, uh, you know, Dave, you know, we're gonna have James Alt going. Well, he did a lot for our folks. Steve McNallan hangs out with us every get together. He's the one who started it. Might pay attention to that first. Um, it, it, it would cause an issue. 
it would really cause an issue. And it would be, it would be a division. If I wanted to create that division, I could really force the issue. And I will certainly push it. But it, it, it didn't get us anywhere in 30 fucking years. We're still negotiating that. We're still allowing ourselves to be susceptible because of that righteous indignation to the buttons that are being thrown in our face 24 seven on social media and, the, and entertainment and TV and the radio and the music we listen to. All of it pushes a button that's, that the foundation of most pain in an individual's life comes from the idea of separation. When we separate ourselves, we create a foundation for pain. I am better than, I know more than, I work harder than, I live, I'm stronger than, I'm smarter than, all of these things that we, we deal with people and we automatically, well, I, I know more than that person about this subject, I, I'm, I'm a little bit better. That separation, that uniqueness will kill a motherfucker, period. I've done more time. I've served in the army longer. I've fought more people. I've slept with more women. I've drank more beer. I've done this. I've done that. And I've done this. And I've done that. And when we create those ideas of separation, we create a foundation for our own pain. Because invariably, invariably, the thought will sneak in at the dinner table of Eager's Feast. You're kind of alone, ain't you? Who are you gonna hang out with? Oh, you got to reduce yourself. You got to be a little. You got to minimize yourself just a little bit to hang out with these people. You may not even like these people. Oh, so you're are, you, are you like my subconscious talking? About? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a human experience, Jesse. We're all dealing with it. It's this. It's this human experience. I'm. This, I deal with it all the time. Man, my dumb ass starts thinking I'm better than anything. I would step on my crank just and trip on it, you know, <laughs> gloriously. I mean, but that's that's just kind of how it is. That's that's the nature of, 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 of our existence. That's the path of the serpent. That's our ability to negotiate. That's what guarantees us lodging in the in the halls of the ACR. And it may not necessarily be in their halls. It may just simply be at the dinner table of our thought process, as I wrote about Negro's Feast. One negative thought, all it takes. One negative thought is all it took to, to, to fuck up the dinner party. Next thing you know, this old boy's had his guts pulled out and tied up his dad with it. And there's a serpent hanging over his face and his girlfriend has to sell. Okay, I appreciate y'all's time. Anybody have any so, else? so we have, uh, this is a, the normal time we were, we were doing before was what, eight o'clock? Is that better for everyone? Because that works better for me most nights, uh, most Sundays. But if this works better, I could rearrange my schedule. What well, works better for everyone here? I'm, whatever time you guys want to do it, I'm good. Okay. Just not in the morning. I'm cool with either one too. Okay. So Sunday, yeah, whatever fine. you want to do. What about you, Crystal? What works better for you? Uh, either I'm flexible as long as I'm not at the hawk, but I haven't been really overnighting on Saturdays. So. Okay. All right. So we will uh, meet again on Sunday, and maybe like we'll everybody try to write down at least a question or two, just so we can keep it popping. And if we, if you don't even use those questions, it don't matter. But it's just the premise of we don't have any dead time and try to use the most of uh, Brian's. I would, knowledge. I would like, I would like the questions to center around where you're at with the Gothi program, okay, or folk builder program, so we can, so we can, uh, so we can readily identify the because there's a lot of there's a lot of things we deal with in those in those roles in leadership. That uh, and and they and they come fast and they come furious, and okay. some days you might not have anything, and the next day you got one guy that made the newspaper, 
and another guy that's getting divorced, and another girl that's lost her mom, uh, and I'm not having all in one day. Mm -hmm. So um, we can get into the esoteric ideals of the of the lore of the room. Oh yeah, I found out today that they have found evidence of the room seventeen thousand years old on the northern coast of Portugal. Yeah, the the Alvo runes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I know that because uh, I'm half Portuguese, so <laughs> I'm like super into the Iberian. Uh, so, and there's also a, a, a deity there, Enriculus, who almost uh, is depicted exactly as, as Odin. He has uh, two dogs and a spear instead of two wolves and a spear. And it's said to this very day that in this village in the Iberian Peninsula, that even after Rome uh, destroyed the temple and built over top of it, that to this day, people still worship there. And it's said that if a man lays at the foot of that, te at that temple and he's worthy, that that deity will come and tell him of his future and fate to this day. And so send me the digits. I want to yeah. know where it's because I'm going. I, I, well, yeah, because you know. I know that's I, that's that's where I want to travel. I actually had a, a plan to travel there before all this COVID crap hit, and so I had all my funds sacked away. And if I don't have I to make spot, it, I'm going. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's very cool. The Alba rooms are something else, man. And that that uh, we had Visigoths and uh, Ostrogoths or, or Visigoths all through that area. And it, it lends pre precedence that uh, we are a singular people in Europe. And uh, I love the fact that something like that came out. Yeah, that, and I saw some, I think they're, they're starting to really promote the oldest human hominid fossil being in Greece, instead of Africa, mm -hmm. now, which tickles the shit out of me. Well, yeah, and it also depicts the fact that we didn't come from there. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right, the boss right. of the bear is the brother of man. I'm gonna go with that one. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you.